Hello everyone. I am Finucci, aka 3D Gurke, and today I'm doing another tutorial video for you showing you how to build and program the servo board for the eyes for the animatronic skull. Before we start, however, I have a confession to make. I have made a slight error in the documentation that I issued for this project. If we take a look at this schematic, the diameter of the tube holding the inner eyeball connecting it to the servo board, it shows 6 mm in the documentation, however that value is wrong. It must be 4 mm outer diameter or else it will be way too big to fit it into the eyeball or the uh, servo board. Here's a list of the parts that we will be needing for this project today. So we'll start with the parts that we have printed. Those will have to be cleaned up a little. Let's start with the inner eyeball. Now this one was printed with a resolution of 0.1 millimeter and uh, we need to smoothen the surface a little to reduce friction between the inner eyeball and the lock ring which will be snapped on later. So this thing comes right off the printing bed and we need to take off any excess material like the brim that I used here to keep it in position while printing. In order to smoothen the surface, I now take a 3 mm screw and a nut. I'll place the screw into the center eyeball and uh, put the nut on the other side and tighten it. Then I take a drilling machine, put the eyeball in. And then I take some sandpaper or an abrasive fleece like this one. You can get it uh, from 3M. It's a polishing fleece. You hold it against the inner eyeball and let it roll. Make sure you don't overstress and you do not overheat. So let it cool down from time to time. It doesn't have to be too perfect. Um, just take off a little. Some of the grooves still remain. We do not have to polish it until it's shiny. Again, from time to time, check the temperature. Because if it gets too hot, um, it'll melt and it'll deform and then we will have to reprint it all over. Next we have the lock rings. Well, I should have called them snap rings. That would be more accurate. However, these will be placed on the inner eyeball like this and you will have to push it over the inner eyeball until uh, the profile snaps into place. Once in place, we want absolutely no friction at all. It must be absolutely smooth. I will show you that later on. This very surface will be part of the linkage. It must be smooth as well, so we just take a file and give it a few strokes. It doesn't have to be too perfect because uh, once the link is being attached, we will use a washer to separate the uh, link bar from the snap ring. When we do a 3D print, at every layer change we have a starting point and an end point. That leaves a small seam of material on the part that we have printed and it is on this snap ring as well. Now that needs to be removed 
both on the outside and especially on the inside of the ring. It's hard to see sometimes. Got it. There it is. On the outside and on the inside. Here's the profiled part of the snap ring and I take this uh, grinding stone in uh, the form of a small ball taken from a Dremel tool and uh, I use it to grind down the seam inside the profiled part. Now this is really important. Now I also take some sandpaper or this um, abrasive fleece here to break the edge a little. That should do the trick. I hope it will snap on uh, to the inner eyeball and then I hope it can be moved on the center eyeball without sticking and without noticeable friction. To help snap it on, I take a little silicon oil as a lubricant. Now there will be a lot of friction before it snaps into the profile, uh, so much that even the material can break, and uh, this silicon oil should help prevent that. Well, while trying to snap the uh, lock ring onto the inner eyeball, I've uh, had several occasions where the snap ring broke. Now that may be due to the filament being rather old. It's a two-year-old filament. This project um, has been on the shelf for a while, but um, I can't remember two years ago having these kind of problems, so I'm sure it is uh, the old filament. However, um, as you can see here, um, this ring broke. There is a small cut and, uh, well, it helps to put the uh, snap ring onto the inner eyeball and it will be held in place by the uh, outer eyeball later on, so um, that crack in the material um, is not a problem at all, so let's say it's not a bug, it's a feature. So if you print the lock rings, why not take a knife and cut it? Cut it all the way through, so you have a completely open ring and it will snap on and off rather easy, and this will help to adjust the eyes mechanics. Now, here I'm um, telling in German that you only cut half of uh, the snap ring, uh, but by now I found out you can cut it all the way through. It makes it way easier to work with the ring and adjust the mechanics. Here's the, the outer eyeball and uh, once you slip it over the lock ring, it'll hold everything in place like the ring was never broken. Having done that, we will have to take the uh, outer eyeball and adjust it to fit onto the lock ring without too much friction as well. Because if you have too much friction on the one hand it will press on the lock ring which then may inhibit uh, the free motion um, between the ring and the inner eyeball. And on the other hand um, I have experienced some problems with the LEDs in the eyes as I already stated in the electronics tutorial. Sometimes they die, sometimes when they overheat it they die at once 
and sometimes when they got overheated while um, soldering they die a few days later so you have um, your eyes completed with LEDs running and one week later one or more LEDs will fail and um, to be able to get the LED out of the eye you must be able to take the outer eyeball off the mechanics without much force because if you can't detach them from the lock ring while being installed in the skull you will have to remove the eyes board which is a lot of work if you can just detach the outer eyeball you can uh, take off uh, pliers and take out the LED resolder a new one and put it back in therefore this must be adjusted accordingly if it takes too much force to put it on and off you might reconsider uh, reprinting the outer eyeball with like 101 uh, or 102 uh, percent size increase retry this until you found the right fit now taking a closer look at the outer eyeball you might notice that there is two ball shapes being united this forms the shape of the pupil and speaking of printing height this starts at 16.4 millimeter of printing height so print the outer eyeball in white until 16.4 millimeter and then change filament to any color you like if you like I did here print two outer eyeballs at once you only have one filament change now when all these parts have their proper adjustment now this outer eyeball is absolutely too sticky but I will not show how to rework it I would rather reprint it so I go on working with these So once that is done, we can take a drill and drill the holes to 4 mm in the back and 5.5 mm in the front of the center eyeball. Five point five is the right measure to fit in the LED as we can see here. Then we take our four millimeter outer diameter tube, about three centimeters of that tube. I have a brass tube here, but you can also use plastic or steel whatever you can find Now we place the tubes also into the servo board and we need to adjust them. 
we assemble the complete eyeball and now we need to pull out the tube out of the uh, board so that the eyeball can reach its uh, maximum up and down position. I will show you. So this is max position down. You can see that the eyeball touches the tube. The lock ring can touch the tube without hitting the board. So that's the right position. And for the maximum up position, the small lever also fits behind the board. And we redo for the other side. Well, it looks like I deformed the tube a little, so let's reshape it to a round form. That should do it. Please note how easily the eyes can move on the inner eyeball. definitiv viel zu schwergängig, das würdet ihr im eingebauten Zustand nie wieder rauskriegen. So. So weit, so schön. So. So, wenn die Augenringe, äh, netter, nettes Wortspiel, also wenn diese Aufschnappringe für die Augen sich einmal frei bewegen lassen und die Augäpfel so weit aufgepasst sind, dass sie das nicht behindern. Dann ich zeige euch hier nochmal im Detail, wie weit der Abstand äh, vom inneren. Here I show you again how much uh, movement the um, snap ring on the inner eyeball must have. This little lever must um, fit behind the board or between board and uh, the eyeball so pull it out accordingly and that's the maximum up position and for the maximum down position the uh, snap ring touches the tube so now it's time to fit the LEDs I'm not quite sure whether I covered this topic in the um, electronic section but here I will show you again how to prepare the LEDs Here is a schematic of uh, the LED chip. It is a WS2812 or 2813 type of LED. I use uh, the 4-pin version here. There is also a 6-pin version which has another layout. You will have to find those plans uh, in the internet. I have bought these in China um, as loose LEDs. Um, I wouldn't recommend you to buy a stripe and try to uh, desolder them from the stripe. Most of the LEDs will die during this process because they um, are very sensitive to heat. Here's the type again. Now we need two pieces, but um, I recommend they are very inexpensive. Um, buy some more so you have a little in reserve if one should die on you. On the housing, in one of the corners, there's a very small pit which shows the orientation. 
This is the pad for negative current. This is the pad for positive current. And we also have digital signal input and digital signal output. As we only have two LEDs, we will have uh, to wire one LED with four wires and one LED with three wires. Here I have a slightly bigger image, which is also mirrored, so that um, it shows the pads looking from the back side of the chip, which means we will have to flip over each chip in this direction. It's this direction, not this direction. Once we flip it over like this, we can take the bigger image and see which pad is where and where to connect which wire. We will need our third hand for the soldering. It's sometimes a little tricky to get them in position. My eyes are old and these chips are really small. We also need some magnet wire. I already prepared it here. How you prepare these wires I have definitely covered in the electronics video. So take a reference to the electronics tutorial for that. For the short version you take your soldering iron on full power put some solder on the tip of your soldering iron. Then you take one of these wires and stick the end into um, the molten metal and then you move it a little back and forth until the uh, insulation melts and is pushed off the tip. Once these are prepared take back uh, the power of your soldering iron if you can like to uh, 320 degrees Celsius. That helps not to overheat the LED chips while soldering on the wires. Bleiben wir zu lange drauf oder gehen wir zu großer Hitze rein oder machen wir zu viele Lötungen direkt hintereinander weg? Kriegen wir zu viel Hitze in das Bauelement und dann stirbt der Prozessor, der da drin ist und dann ist die LED kaputt und kann nicht mehr weiterverwendet werden. So. Wir werden jetzt diese LED hier verlöten. Die kriegt vier von den Drähten. So this LED will receive four wires. We will start with uh, the positive um, current pad, which is on the top right side. Now you take the end of the wire and uh, bend it in a 90 degree angle for about two millimeters because um, once we attach this to the pad I want the wire to approach the LED in the middle of the chip and then angle off towards the pad. I already put some solder onto the pads so I can attach the wires directly. Some solder would help. Put it in position, slightly touch it, 
And that's it. Position kommt mittig raus. Und damit ich später weiß, was welcher Draht ist. Now I mark this wire with red. This will be positive power. So later on when these wires are in a bundle, I can still see which wire goes to which pad. Let's mark this one red. So, dann schnappen wir uns hier den nächsten Draht und machen genau das gleiche Spiel nochmal. Abwinkeln. Same procedure with the next wire. Angle it slightly at the end for about two millimeters. Put it on the pad, touch it with the iron, and that's it. Kurz drauf und schon fertig. Now this is the negative power pad, so we will mark this wire black. Da geht es mit dem dritten Draht. Abwinkeln. Kurz anpassen, dass der so halbwegs in Position geht. Next wire, angle it and put it on. Auflöten. Fertig. Das ist digital out. That's been the digital out wire and I mark it blue and red. Digital out, mach ich blau und rot. Blau und rot. Last but not least, vierter Draht, vorsichtig an die Seite ziehen. And the last wire, as the others before, angle it slightly and we attach it to the digital input pad. Ansetzen. zu, dass wir hier noch keinen Kurzschluss machen. Now we take a close look, see whether some of the wires come too close, so we we'll put them into position and separate them a little, so we don't short circuit here. So, und das ist der letzte Draht. This wire will be marked blue. Digital input. So, jetzt nehmen wir die LED raus. Now we'll take the LED out of the clamp. And then we hold the wires like this and twist them for about two times. And we see that all the wires go towards the center of the chip and then they spread out toward the pads. That's exactly what we want because the wires will be uh, put into the tube and this will automatically center our LED in the center of the tube inside the inner eyeball. Do the same for the second LED with three wires only, because we do not use the digital output.
So here are the LEDs again, one three wired, one four wired. Both chips receive positive and negative voltage. The four wire chip ha gets um, digital signal from the Arduino and it has a digital output which connects to the input of the three wired LED. This will be the position where the connector will be placed later on, so all wires should end about here. So, here we go. We bundle up the wires of the LED with the four wires and put it into the left eyeball. Pull it slightly in, not too far, not yet. Same procedure with the other LED. Twist the wires at their end and insert the wires into the other eyeball. So, ich habe mir angewöhnt, auf jeden Fall ein wenig As I mentioned earlier, sometimes these LED die on you. So um, if you pull them in all the way in and then um, have no extra wire available to pull them out again, uh, then you will have to remove the whole board to have the LEDs changed. So uh, leave a little wire, excess wire in place so you can pull them out. I will show you how to do that later on. We will make a sh small roll of wire and put it into this hole. So now we have to join the wires, spread the bundles and look for the color codes. I'm not sure whether you can see the colors, but we will join the two red wires together. We will join the black wires together and attach them to a three pin connector. And then we will join the blue wire and the blue red wire of both LEDs. And the blue wire of the four wired LED also will be connected to the connector and that should do the trick. So let's solder the two red wires. Schwarz. 
So I cut them to length, twist them and solder them. That would be the black wires. Auch fertig. Das ist die direkte Leitung für den Dateninput. Der geht dann ungefähr hier hin. Und das hier ist die Leitung für die Datenübertragung vom einen zum anderen Chip. So now we do the data connection from one chip to the other. Blue and red wire from the one chip and the blue wire from the other chip. Just join them. Should be somewhere between the two chips. Twist them, cut them, solder them. That's it. We do not have to specially insulate them because um, they will be taped down later on. You may notice these channels on the bottom side of the board. These are for cable management purposes. You can try to put the wires in, but um, the wires are 0.25 millimeters of diameter. It's not really necessary to put them into these channels. If you like, you can do, but you don't have to. Just tape them down. That'll do it. Cut the data input wire to length and we are ready to solder on the connector. So here's our three pin connector. It's just a header pin. As I also showed you in the electronics tutorial, the cheapest way to make a connector. Dann halten wir den mal kurz fest. So, in der Elektronik Sektion haben wir auch schon die Verbindungskabel vorbereitet. So, welcome back. Here is the connector cable that we already manufactured during the electronics tutorial. It's a three pin female connector labeled and I used to put these connectors on facing the label to the outside of the board. So that will be showing us which cable connects to which pin on the connector before we glue it to the board. As we can see, we have a red lead coming in, a black lead coming in, and a green lead. Red and black is positive and negative voltage, and the green wire is digital signal, which should connect to the blue wire of our servo board. And the red and the black accordingly. So. Das heißt, theoretisch sollte that should do it and it means theoretically this should run. So, let's give it a test. We will also um, drive the two servos that we need into their 90 degree neutral position. Therefore we will need um, the electronics that we prepared in the electronics tutorial. And what else we need for that is a program and the program I will show you on the computer. You will need the Arduino IDE. Download it and install it. Install all the drivers, which is not quite uh, easy, especially the USB driver made a few problems. You can find all information on the internet. Just type in USB driver installation Arduino and you will find the material. 
Seite vom Hersteller des äh, USB äh, Entoder Chips äh, herunterladen. Ist alles in Chinesisch geschrieben, man muss sich da wirklich ein klein wenig mit Trial and Error durchklicken, bis man das eventuell gefunden hat. Wenn das alles ordentlich installiert ist, dann Laden wir das Programm Servers All 90. So, we will prepare a program called Servers All 90. It uses two libraries. You may have to install these, but that's quite easy. Just follow the menu here. I don't know how exactly um, those menu titles are in English, so just follow the menu. Include libraries, you will find um, this uh, search window. We will have to install two libraries. The one uh, for the servers is called VarSpeed Servo. So um, Victor Alpha Romeo put it into the search window and you will find it. Now all the hits will be shown in the window and they are alphabetically um, lined up. So will you will have to go to the bottom of the list and find VarSpeed Servo. Just click on it, install it, and that does the trick. The other library that we need will be the Adafruit NeoPixel. Search for Neo, and you will find it on the top of the list as Adafruit NeoPixel Library. Install it and we're good to go. Ist bei mir auch schon installiert. Da könnt ihr verschiedene Versionen auswählen. Nehmt einfach die neueste, installiert sie euch und dann haben wir damit keine Probleme mehr. Was macht nun dieses Programm? Das ist relativ schnell erklärt. So, what is this program doing? Basically not very much. It initializes all the servo channels 1 through 6 to 90 degrees in the setup and I added a test of the LEDs, red, green, blue, and let's flash it and test it. Das Ganze müssen wir nun auf den Arduino draufbrennen. Das könnt ihr hier mit diesem Button Pfeil nach rechts machen. Und hier unten seht ihr schon, Sketch wird kompiliert. Dauert einen kleinen Moment, bis der fertig ist, dann wird hochgeladen. I usually use a laptop when programming Arduinos, but um, in this case when uh, we have a lot of testing to do, especially later on when we uh, test for the limits of the servos, um, it'll be better to have your computer constantly connected to the Arduino on the electronics and the electronics constantly connected to the servos, so um, you do not have a lot of plugging and unplugging to do. Den Arduino rüberschieben kann. So, wir sehen uns gleich. Back to the table. So, da sind wir wieder. So, here we go again. I cleaned it up a little and we will plug in our electronics that we have built following the um, electronics tutorial. This is the very one. It is also uh, already connected to power. So, I will switch power on. Then we will take the connector cable, put it on, and we can see the LEDs light up and they flash in red, green and blue. So both LEDs survived the soldering process and they are ready to be put into their final position. And as the program is already running on the Arduino. I can attach these servos to uh, one of the connectors. These are grouped in groups of three. So you cannot put it anywhere on that um, pin line. Take the very right or the very left and you can see that uh, the servo is moving into its 90 degrees position. I already prepared it here, the rudder horn is in the right position. Now look at the other servo, there it drives to 90 position. That's the neutral position that we will use as basis for our programming. 
Let's put them aside for now because now it's time to put the LEDs into the eyes. To make the LEDs removable, I take some double-sided tape, just a very, very small patch about the size of the LED chip itself. I cut it in a square, size and shape about the same as the LED chip. And then I make a cut from one side of the square to the middle so I can use it like a sleeve and put it around the wires going for the center of the LED. It doesn't have to be too perfect because the LED chip is not subject to any force once it's in the inner eyeball. Just try to center it as good as you can and that should do it. So, kleiner Test, ob ich nicht was abgerissen habe. Let's test whether this damaged any of the connections. Still alive. So I take off the wax paper and then I take my tweezers and position the LED into the inner eyeball. Which doesn't fit here because I forgot to drill the hole to 5.5 millimeters. Once the LEDs are inside of the eyeball, we can carefully pull on the wires and pull them into their final position. So the final position will be at the top end of the tube inside of the eyeball. Now I have sharp tweezers here. Do not use these tweezers to push the LED into position. You will need a dull object for that, not a sharp object. Now I use a drill bit here or a screw to push it into the eyeball 
into position and have the double-sided tape connect. This is still positioning. This is a 5 mm bolt and I use that one to push it down. No bang, no smoke, still alive. Let's return to cable management. Now that the chips are in position, we can take the wires and make a small roll of wire for the access wire that we will store for the case of LED failure. Take any round object like a drill bit or um, a Dremel tool that I had here handy. So just wrap the wire around, make a small roll and put the roll into the hole. That'll do the trick. After that we take some tape and tape everything down. So here comes some hot glue and we will attach the three pin connector. Now the orientation we have seen when we had attached the cable to it label facing outward, so this is the position, but when gluing it on, be aware that uh, the space on the left of the uh, heat glue gun um, is for the servo, so uh, don't put any hot glue on there, for it will have to be removed before the um, servo goes on. There you can see the tape that I used to tape down the wires. sind jetzt auf 90 Grad Position gefahren und es werden zwei Servos benutzt. Der eine wird hier ungefähr in dieser Position aufgebracht. Now that both servos are driven to 90 degree position, we can attach them. The rudder horns are too big, they will be ha have to be clipped off, like this. Just leave one horn for service. Everything else can go. So, we have 
bei dem Servo, was die Y-Achse steuert, ein kleines platztechnisches Problem. The servo is serving as servo for the Y-Axis up and down motion has a little spaces, spatial problem here because um, the metal angle holding the skull is going around this position and um, in order not to interfere with that this servo can only move from 90 degrees to zero degrees. It should not move beyond 90 degrees because then the rudder horn might touch the angle and that would put stress on the servo. That's not a problem because 90 degree motion for the y-axis is more than enough to uh, put the eyes to their full up and down position. Dem Haltewinkel in Berührung kommt. Das interessiert uns aber nicht, weil das völlig ausreichend ist, diese 90 Grad, um den vollen Ausschlag auf der Y-Achse zu bekommen. Also müssen wir uns da gar nicht großartig Sorgen drum machen. Das programmieren wir hinterher einfach so, wie wir es brauchen. So, wir benötigen gleich noch ein paar Kabelbinder. The servos will be attached with It's some sort of anti-skid rubber. You can buy it in the one euro shop. Dieses Servo setzen wir möglichst so an, dass das Ruderhorn ziemlich mittig rausgeht. Eat wrong. The orientation is wrong. I will find out later. So don't attach the servo as yet. Please uh, take a few minutes to look how it is attached correctly. Je nach Kabelbindermodell, das ihr verwendet müssen wir hier ein oder zwei Kabelbinder investieren. Falls ihr euch gefragt habt, wofür diese ganzen Löcher in der Platine sind. If you ask yourself why there are so many small holes in the uh, servo board, those are for the tie wraps, which attach the servos to the board. Y-Achse, dann kommt noch der für die X-Achse und bevor ich hier gleich keinen Platz mehr habe, mache ich noch schnell den Querverbinder. I also forgot the link between the eyes for X and Y axis. So this is also printed and you will have to drill all the holes to about two millimeters, especially those two holes where the screws go in. Where the wires go in, you may also use uh, 1.5 millimeter, that'll do. I drilled everything to two millimeters here. If there's a little play in the linkage later on, who cares? Wie schon gesagt, wenn die aus dem Drucker kommen, einmal kurz mit einer Feile diese Flächen glatt machen. Those holes in the snap rings, don't drill them open, because we will need a little um, material there to displace when the screw is being screwed in, for the screw to hold. If that doesn't hold up, we will have uh, to use a nut as well on the underside of uh, the snap ring link. So it doesn't matter, but you can do it without the nut. Können wir auf 1,5 mm aufbohren. 
Now I drill them open to 1.5 millimeters, but uh, that's not really necessary. You can use the holes as they are from the print. Eine 2 mm M2 Schraube einschrauben lässt, wenn wir vorsichtig sind beim Anziehen. Und dann brauchen wir keine Mutter zum Kontern. Haben wir da zu viel Spiel, dass die Schraube nicht richtig festzieht. Na, könnte schon knapp werden hier. Dann müssen wir mit einer Mutter kontern, ist aber nicht weiter schlimm. Ein bisschen Krummelkram. Now for these link connections I use uh, metric screws. M2, 2 mm metric bolts and nuts. Um, if you can't get them in the US, um, find something according. But we will see more of that uh, when assembling the skull. Now I'm using for the links stainless steel wire 0.8 millimeters. If you have thicker wire, you may have to drill open these holes, but keep in mind um, if you open up these holes, you're losing material. So if you take the very outmost hole on this rudder horn uh, and you drill it open, it may result in an open hole S that cannot be used anymore for the wire. So in that case, you should take um, the second hole from the outside and drill that one open. We still have enough motion distance of the rudder horn to fit our needs. Weiter geht's. Wir brauchen eine Schraube. We take one of the bolts. Das hier muss gleichgängig sein. And this must be moving absolutely freely. Then we take a washer, put it on. In between the black link bar and the white bar on the snap ring. And then we try to attach it to the snap ring. Quite tricky. In den Ring hineingeschraubt. Ist ein bisschen Hummelskram. Ich hoffe, ups, bin ich gegen die Kamera gestoßen. Man kann das sehen. This is really tricky, but we have a new feature. We can detach the ring. So take it off and try to reattach. Abnehmbar gemacht, indem wir das aufgeschnitten haben. Ja. Und damit können wir das runternehmen. Und allerdings muss ich gucken, dass es so rum das passt. So. Vielleicht geht das besser. So. Schauen wir mal. Das da jetzt reindrehen lässt. Ich habe das weggedreht. Wie sieht es jetzt aus? Jetzt geht's. Vorsichtig. At last. And now, under no circumstances, destroy the tap. Screw it until the screw gets a little force and then give it half a turn back. See, this ring is not split completely in half, so you can't detach it easily, but it doesn't matter. We will make this one work as well. This work should be easier with no servo attached to the board, so you may want to uh, do this step before attaching the servos to the board. Okay. 
Jo, die hat gegriffen, das sieht gut aus. Nicht zu fest ziehen. Ja, sieht doch hübsch aus. Knapp den geht da drauf. So, hier vorne habe ich noch ein paar Grate stehen. Ich glaube, das sind die, die gerade hier eingehakt haben. Die können wir einmal kurz abschleifen mit dem Schleifstrief. Everything needs to move absolutely freely, even with this connection bar attached. You may have to adjust a little because we have some work done since we attached these. Just readjust for perfect operation. So, sieht eigentlich ganz gut aus. Das ist die Beweglichkeit, die wir brauchen. So, mit der Beweglichkeit hergestellt. We can now attach the second servo, which I already have cut in the wrong direction. Very well. No trouble, we can uh, detach the rudder horn, turn it 180 and reattach. Einfach um 180 Grad drehen, wieder aufsetzen. Da kommt er hin. So, this is the correct position and the rudder horn has the correct position as well. Take two tie wraps and strap it into position. Now, this is the servo for the X axis of the eyes. This is the correct position. We will correct the position of the Y axis servo shortly. So, ein bisschen Platz müssen wir lassen, dass der Stecker ordentlich gestickt werden kann. Und dann. So. Wegziehen. Once it is attached, check whether the linkage can still move. For the links between the rudder horns and the linkage bar, I also use 0.8 mm stainless steel wire. Was wir auf jeden Fall brauchen werden, ist eine Spitzzange ähnlich wie diese. So, und nun. So, these are the tools that we need: a wire cutter and a pair of pliers. There you go, Einstein. So the linkage would be way too short to uh, get x-axis movement while moving on the y-axis. The linkage must be longer, so the servo must be turned 180 with the rudder horn facing the back of the assembly.
However, both flanges on that servo have to go. So, da wollen wir die Kamera abgehauen. Es geht weiter mit dem Servo. Was? Linkage at last. Wie schon gesagt, ich benutze 08er VA Draht. Und so, on one end of the wire I form a small hook like this one. That one will be attached to the linkage bar. So we drive the position of the rudder horn to the 90 degree position, which will be eyes up maximum. So uh, we take the length that we need for this uh, link rod, do a zigzag and in uh, at the end and cut it off and then attach it to the servo. This is how it works. Mit der Zange ein bisschen zubiegen, dass der nicht abhaut. Ja, und im Prinzip ist es das schon. Well, here I drive the servo to its full forward position and I see that the eyes have not reached their fully down position, which means the linkage is a little too short. So here is our new linkage with a little arc to give us a little more material if we should need it. Zigzag at the end, make a hook on the other end. This is a little elastic too, so if we should hit a physical maximum of the ice, this link will flex a little and uh, there should be no damage. However, we try to find our limits without stressing any of the material.
So, here's our Y-axis connecting rod. The X-axis can move freely. Perfect. Das ist die Länge, die wir brauchen. Muss man natürlich dafür sorgen, dass uns das hier auch nicht abhaut. As you can see, you need to really thoroughly close the hook, so it doesn't cut loose here. So, wir haben hier maximalen Winkel nach unten. And you can see here, we have maximum downward angle on the eyes, so the linkage is good. Das sieht ganz gut aus. Tick länger könnte es noch sein, aber... Und jetzt mal nicht päpstlicher sein als der Papst. Das ist gut genug. Ja. Der Neutralwert liegt dann irgendwo zwischen voll vorwärts und... The neutral position for the eyes is somewhere in between 90 degrees rudder horn upwards and completely forward. We will find out when finding the limits later on. Eingeschränkt in dieser Position, aber nichtsdestotrotz. Unser Ruderhorn geht nur leicht nach hinten, das ist akzeptabel. Da sollten wir in keine größeren Probleme laufen. So. Zweite Anlenkung bauen wir im Prinzip absolut gleich. We'll do the very same for the linkage of the axis servo. We will start with the hook, make an arc into the wire and then take the length to the servo, which rudder horn should be in 90 degrees position. This time we need to do the arc so that this link is on top of the y-axis linkage and they do not interfere. So we will stay above it by arcing the link. Da können wir es ruhig versuchen neutral einzustellen. Das wäre hier. Wenn wir den da jetzt reinsetzen, wäre er hier und dann müssten wir hier den Tick halt machen. ist einfach den Bogen etwas verstärken. So, jetzt aufbiegen. Rein damit. Zumachen. Nicht einfach nur zu. Please note, just to close the hook, not to squeeze it flat so that the link still has some play when attaching to the link bar. Ungefähr so. Mehr oder weniger. Mehr oder weniger geradeaus. That's about it. Eine Richtung. Komm rum. Andere Richtung. Ich denke, damit kann man arbeiten. So. werden die Augen aufgesteckt und schon glotzen uns die Dinger an. So. Damit ist im Prinzip das Augenboard fertig. Wir haben die Completing the Assembly aufgebaut. Mehr wäre hier jetzt nicht zu tun. So, one thing left to do. Programming. We will have to find out what the physical limits of this assembly is and um, include that to our future programming. So we're heading back to the computer. 
Back at the computer, we start up the program servo limits test and load it into the Arduino IDE. The program is using the same header as uh, the program All90. That means it initializes all servos to the 90 degree position. But then we take one defined servo and drive that one away from the neutral position 90 degrees to 90 degrees plus and 90 degrees minus in 10 degree steps and we take a look at the desk and see the result and then we go back to programming and checking again whether we reach the physical limits. Assuming 90 degrees is our neutral position we will start with the value 90 degrees here and then we drive it to 100 degrees. I also have a function here to uh, change the color of the eyes which we won't be using. Ten degrees for the first step is rather little. Uh, we will have way higher values later, but to start with, uh, ten degrees in both directions would mean uh, 180 to the other side. Programmieren das mit Extremwerten oberhalb und unterhalb der 90 Grad und schauen, ob wir damit an die Limits kommen und wenn nicht, werden die Werte erhöht und schrittweise ähm, tasten wir uns dann an die physischen Limits heran. So, so we'll be starting with the X axis of the eyes. As you can see here, that would be servo number 5. So, we will have to set servo 5 in each of these program functions. You can search for servo 1 and replace it with servo 5. That's rather easy. And you can flash it on the Arduino and see what happens. Das Programm nun auf den Arduino. Und gehen mal rüber zum Basteltisch und schauen, was da ist. So, back at the table. We can see movement to the left and to neutral and to the right. As we programmed, this is uh, 10 degrees steps. So we'll head back to the program and increase the values. So the 90 degrees value stays as it is, but we will change the 100 value to 110. Now we take that value of 90 degrees now as our middle position. If it happens not to be the exact neutral position, we will adjust that later in the program. But for now, for the first uh, steps of finding the limits, we define 90 degrees as neutral. Due to the position of the rudder horn on the axis of the servo, um, this may differ a little. We will find out the exact value later. So, we increase 100 to 110 and decrease 80 to 70 degrees. Upload to the Arduino and see what happens at the table. Well, back at the table, we can see 
increased movement to both sides. So we have an increased output to the right side, which means I can adjust the neutral position by adjusting the linkage. Looking better, but we will still have to increase a little more. So, the Ausschläge, die wir hatten, waren 110, 70. 110 and 70. We will increase to 120 and decrease to 60. Let's flash it up to the Arduino and return to the table. So, we're back. Looking good so far. Although elevation to the left is still a little small, we will have to increase that one. And the movement to the right side is closing to the maximum position. Let's keep an eye on that. So I've flashed on another program. Um, you may see that I have uh, changed the value 130 degrees back to 50. This is only to see uh, which number in programming uh, co is corresponding to which side of movement on the Arduino. Value bigger than 90 is right side and lower than 90 is left side movement. So let's get back to increasing the values 50 and 140. So back to the table. So, schauen wir uns mal die Ausschläge an. Die nach rechts, die gehen schon ziemlich weit. Movement to the right side is satisfactory. Links kann noch ein bisschen mehr. And to the left side, there's still a little space left. Looking at it again, I think uh, the right side movement is at its maximum. Anything else uh, would overstress the linkage. But we have a little space left for movement to the left side, so we will increase that value. You can see that you have reached the physical limit when um, the eyes are no longer moving, but the servo does. Da geht noch ein bisschen. Also wieder zurück und den Ausschlag nach links. So we will increase the value for the left side only. So let's reprogram the values to 130 and let's try 50. Back at the table. Right side movement is okay. 130 is maximum. And we also found the maximum elevation to the left side. So I will program the neutral position now which shouldn't be 85, it should be 95. I will correct that later on. And we have uh, the same amount of degrees to the right and to the left from the value 95. So we have found our limits for the x-axis for the eyes. Here I have programmed some additional information into the header of the program. As you can see here, it is um, a list of the maxim maxima and minima for all channels, for all servos. And um, 
This will be copied into all programs that will be programmed for this skull. Um, the three skulls I have already built are named Alpha, Beta and Gamma. So this will be Delta. So we fill in these values as we find them in testing. And we will carry on all these values through all the programs uh, that we do for the Delta skull so that we don't exceed the limits while programming. So here's also the correction to 95 degrees neutral and we have 45 degrees of elevation to each side. Now that we found those values, we can also change the neutral position in the setup where all the servos are initialized. So servo number 5 initializes now to 95 degrees neutral. So now let's change the values to serve servo number 6. Zu diesem Zweck gehen wir wieder ins Programm und sagen jetzt mal We will also start with 90 degrees as a starting point, but now we have to find out to which side we have to change the value to see a uh, forward movement of the rudder horn. So let's change one value to 95. And we should see some movement. Let's flash it and return to the table. And we flashen das Ganze mal drauf. So, wieder am Basteltisch angekommen. So, here we are. We have servo movement, but we do not have any eye movement. So, these five degrees are completely swallowed up by the linkage and the play that we have in the linkage. So, we will have to increase the value to see any more movement. But we can see the movement of the rudder horn. We have increased by 5 degrees and the rudder horn is moving backwards, which means eyes up. So, so in testing we will have to decrease from 90 degrees to drive the eyes down. So, that's the basis of our testing. Let's get back to the computer and program the values. Here we go. So, we will decrease the value and as 90 degrees should be eyes completely up, we can decrease the value drastically. So, let's drive it almost completely down, let's say 10 degrees and see what happens. And as 90 degrees is not the completely up position for the eyes, so let's try 100 degrees here, plus 10, and see what happens. Well, the eyes down position is looking pretty good. It seems we are reaching the complete downward elevation of the eyes. But the up position can use a little more adjusting. And I can see that uh, when the eyes reach their maximum down position, there's still movement in the servo, so we can decrease that value a little. So let's go back to the program. So eyes up to 120 and eyes down to 20. So let's take a look. So, das ist maximal nach oben. 
Maximum up position looks good. Das ist maximal nach unten. Maximum down looks good. Aber die Neutralstellung ist noch nicht ganz korrekt. Hängt auch später ein bisschen davon ab. But we still have to adjust the neutral position. We may have to change that value later on when the ice board is fit to the skull. But for now, we can change the value for the neutral that the board has. Ein wenig weiter nach vorne, das programmiere ich mal eben und dann schauen wir uns das an. So, maximaler Winkel rauf, bis zum Anschlag, passt. Maximaler Winkel runter, auch bis zum Anschlag, passt auch. Und die Neutralposition irgendwo dazwischen. Das passt. Das bedeutet für die so, unsere these are our values. Für die Y-Achse sind damit auch ermittelt. Die Neutralposition ist 80. Neutral position is 80 degrees. So, let's put it in our list. 80, 80 for neutral. Maximal nach Maximum downward is 20 and maximum up is 120. That's it. We can work with that. So, damit sind die Limits für das Augenbord ermittelt und das Augenbord ist im Prinzip damit fertig. Jetzt, da die Filmaufnahmen mehr oder weniger fertig sind, kann ich auch ein bisschen an den ganzen Dingen wackeln. Und ich stecke nochmal den... Now that uh, the filming has finished, I can do a little experimenting on this board. So, let's plug in the LEDs. Nice! Shiny. Alles funktioniert. Ihr könnt euch noch mal anschauen, wie hier die Servos arbeiten. So I'm turning the board to show you the motion of the servo. It's only one servo channel working now. So this brings this video to an end. The tutorial is done. We have completed the servo ice board for the animatronic skull. I hope this helps you to realize your own project on animatronic skull. Thanks for watching. See you soon on the next tutorial for the skull mechanics. I am Finucci. Glück auf!